Welcome to CBN Force Prime Time News Package. For today, I am a presenter, Alian Christopher. First up, reports which in CBN 4 is that a vehicular accident occurred in the St. Joseph area. Reports also state that the motor vehicle went over a cliff in the said area and plunged into the sea. Marissa Stedman reports from St. Joseph. CBN 4 is live on the scene in the community of St. Joseph where we received reports this morning that an accident occurred here. We're still uncertain whether the accident occurred last night or early into the morning. The Nissan four-wheel pickup truck is said to have been driven by a male adult. It is alleged that the male driver is deceased, however, the police have not confirmed that information. We can tell you this, that skid marks indicate that the, that the vehicle left the main road and a plunge into the seaside which is well over a hundred feet at the moment villagers have succeeded in removing the individual from the vehicle cbn4 continues to watch as the story unfolds marissa stedman cbn4 news well the circumstances surrounding that accident is also remaining unknown and cbn4 will continue to monitor that story and the project coordination unit of the pilot program for climate resilience disaster vulnerability reduction project under the ministry of health and environment held the inaugural mission for the commencement of the national soils survey and mapping sub project the soil survey technical working group guided by the consultant dr stephen dadio and comprised of representatives from the pcu division of agriculture dowasco physical planning division Office of Disaster Management, Lands and Survey Division, and the Ministry of Public Works and Ports ably supported the successful outcome of the mission. The mission was held from the 8th to the 12th of January 2018 and entailed data review of existing soils data for the Commonwealth of Dominica. The main objectives of the mission was to undertake a comprehensive needs assessment to include recommendations to improve institutional capacity as well as an in-depth data review of existing literature and data on soils characteristics. As part of the activities, the team visited various sites island-wide, observing soil types and collecting representative soil samples for rapid testing. The Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development expressed sincere thanks to the alias for sales with support from CISM for donating support for school supplies sorry, with more than 4 thousand euros mainly French material to the department. 18 schools from across Dominica were beneficiaries of that donation. Chandler Hyacinth, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, says that the ministry recognizes the efforts of all the organizations involved including Charlene White Christian who enabled such a donation through a, a presentation she made in Matnik. A global expressions of the damages caused by Hurricane Maria in Matri. She also presented a PowerPoint presentation. So persons were able to visual, visualize the extent of the damage for the Ministry of Education created by the, from the harbor created by Hurricane Maria. The extent of damages for the Ministry of Education is worth over $250 million. And that doesn't, doesn't just include the damage to our buildings, because we have some 24 schools which, which has extensive damage. But it also includes damage to equipment, damage to our resources, damage to textbooks, damage to our libraries. So this donation by this various organization, which is fronted by the Center International Seju, the MACNIC, is very timely. Hyacinth noted that this donation will do good in assisting the teachers conduct their classes at school. To introduce some fun ways to get our teachers and our students to be more engaged in the learning and teaching of French. It will make it possible to have more materials at our disposal so we can get, especially the French language, more engaged among our students. So, on behalf of the Ministry of Education, through Mr. Hans, 
we want you to express our deepest appreciation to the various organizations for us. We know that the, the representative who made attempts to be here is unable to be here. So through you, we want you to express for us our deepest appreciation. And with this, as I said earlier, this contribution is timely and it will go a long way. Hyacinth also stated that she is also very thankful to Express De Zeal, who transported the items to Dominica as a partner in this initiative. And also in the news, Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal Robert Tong has revealed that Carnival 2018 will have a scaled-down budget. The minister notes that the recent budget for Carnival was well over $700,000 and that, he said, will be decreased to just over $250,000. To the budget um, for the last two years, our, our, the amount that we spent was about $720,000. Uh, we have brought it all the way down to $263,000. So the budget has been significantly reduced, bearing in mind the, the, the time that we are in. But the, the minister also called on persons to go out and enjoy the carnival, despite the huge cut in the budget themselves we want family members to come down and to help your family members and another part of it, of, of it too is that just having your friends and family here provides such a, a big moral um, boost it makes you feel a lot better and gives you that encouragement to continue moving forward and we'll be back with more news right after this break And welcome back to CBN 4's Print and News. The community of Point Michel was left to mourn over 15 people after the passage of Hurricane Maria. The evident devastation coupled with loss of life has made Point Michel the hardest hit community in Dominica. Point Michel is also said to be among the communities that may need relocation since communities that are closely located to water sources such as ravines, rivers and streams were all subject to a lot more devastation. Marissa Stedman visited Point Michelle as she gives a report post-Maria. 
Ali and it's been four months after the passage of Hurricane Maria on September 18th, 2017, yet the evidence of the devastation left behind is still there. CBN Voice Police to report that we are now in the community of Point Michelle, one of the most vulnerable and hardest hit communities in Dominica after the passage of Hurricane Maria. And as we drove through, we saw evidence of the devastation. Yes, persons have resumed to life as normal because life has to continue, but you can see that they have been affected by the deadly category five hurricane we notice a small ravine some would even consider it a drain that is said to have consumed the lives of an entire family as surprising as it seems it is true and if you look opposite me opposite Melvinas one of our most popular hot spots in Dominica we notice a tiny area that may have appeared like a stream has now opened up it appears that during the storm during the hurricane water was cascading from the mountains and opened up and must have affected Melvina's building. Just a look at the popular hotspot known particularly on a Friday night for giving off pulsating rhythms and very popular for having fish now simply reduced to rubble and debris. CBN4 also noticed the scare of the cliffs, the cliffs that are overhanging over our heads. They appear to be quite scary and Point Michel is not only vulnerable to flooding from the streams and ravines that are there, they are also prone to flooding from the seawater since Point Michel is a community that is very closely located to the seaside. And of course, Alien, since the passage of Hurricane Maria, every time you make a reference of Point Michel, people remember the families who lost their lives as a result of the hurricane. And this stream that I made reference to, I'm standing in it right now. There's very little water flowing through it. I spoke to one resident who mentioned to me that during the nightfall of Hurricane Maria, this was not a stream. This was a monstrous river that claimed the life of an entire family who lived alongside the river and four homes were lost during the storm one homeowner who lost his home said that the debris there were mountainous heaps of debris since the passage of hurricane maria every time point michelle is spoken of people remember the lives that were lost in this community and again still in point michelle today we're meeting up with one resident who lost her nephew during the hurricane on September 18, 2017, and she admits she does not like revisiting the memory of this hurt and pain, but she is willing to tell us a little something about what transpired that night and how is life after Maria. Thank you for speaking to CBN4. Welcome. Can you just state your name for the purpose of the record? Well, my name is Anne Charles, nephew of Royston Toussaint, who lost his life after Hurricane Maria. Where did you guys find him? Well, we find him just by his home side. I mean, he was still lying there, you know? Just by his home side, he was still lying there. Well, what happened now, we fought like, well, the ravine, it went down really heavy. But we fought, he left his home, and you know, went somewhere else. But after a while, we fought of him, but it was like kind of too late. Nobody could come out that night, because it was a horrible night that night. But we, f you know, as I tell you, well, the place was just devastated. But the morning when we get up, when you look at the place, oh my God, every place wasn't it again. So then he come in my mind because I know where he was after Erica. It wasn't too good. But then, as I tell you, we thought of him, but there I saw a girl come in and she said, eh, eh, my, um, whatever, whatever. She called his name, call him by his name. And she said, well, Royston died and that was just it let me ask you I do want to know you mentioned tropical storm Erica mm. during tropical storm Erica did the ravine flow down heavily as it did during Maria like half half real half half but we wasn't expecting it heavy like that but it to come down heavy it was big big all big so do you think for the coming hurricane season 2018 that persons will choose to remain here or will they be forced to evacuate? Well, they ask them, well, our government asks them to evacuate because there is not a safe place. Not because everybody who was up his place, majority of the home there was gone.
And I know you, you mentioned that um, Royston, he was your nephew, but what can you tell us about the entire family who died? Did you know them personally? Well, well I, know, I know some of the family that died, but, well, it's just a long story. I cannot even explain for you, but it was just very sad that a family who was living close, her mother with about four her four, one to about her three kids gone and her grandchildren gone so completely about maybe nine of them gone in that home and recently we've been getting a lot of rainfall how does that affect you all who live in well, that area well it really affects me every time i hear about the rain i get scared i really get in scared when i see the rain falling down it haven't got to fall too heavy but i get in scared because look at the ravine that is where everybody gone down we're missing a lot of body well, I kind of, well, I get in over it because we find his body. It was his, he and another boy, they find their body. But majority of the body was perish. They haven't found the body. So I feel him kind of pleased because at least I see him. We did a burial for him. And I, I kind of, I we get in there because he was finally buried. Okay. There you have it from a resident in the Point Michel area who lost her nephew, Annette Charles. And I will reiterate, like she said, they are coping and doing much better, knowing that they found the body of the dead loved ones. But as for those whose family members have been lost as a result of the hurricane and have not found their bodies, they are still left in mourning. Marissa Stedman, CBN4 News. And male CARICOM youth ambassador Erdly Peer has stated that his findings were interesting and yet not shocking as it relates to how relevant is gender identity to Dominica's youth. Peer said the survey comes as a result of a series of meetings whereby PANCAP trains young leaders to advocate on the rights of many groups, including minority groups. Information like it used to, to relay that. And what were your findings? Well, my findings were, were, were interesting um, and yet not shocking. Um, we had a few questions, if I could just, just go for some of the questions. Um, briefly, example like, what is your age? In Dominica, usually, or in Dominica, our youth range is from basically 16 up to 35. In some other countries, it might earn up to 28 years. But in Dominica, we go up to 35 years. So we had the different age ranges between 16 to 18, below 15, 19 to 24, 25 to 29, and 30 to 35. And one of the observations that we saw, because one of the requirements of CARICOM is to bring the number down to zero. Bring HIV AIDS to zero. That's the mandate. Um, what we have seen is that through the use of medicine, that through mother to childbirth, that we've eliminated that. So right now, if you're pregnant and you do have HIV AIDS and you go to a doctor regularly for your checkups and you get your, your, your vaccinations on time, you will see that you will not be able to transmit the, the virus to, 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 to your child. But what we've been seeing on the rise is, is in the age range between 16 to 24 that there has an increase in... Peer notes that this is an important topic and urges young persons to make the right choices. Something that we should be very concerned about, especially entering into the carnival season. Right now, we know that promiscuity um, sometimes goes on the edge because of the use of alcohol and sometimes different types of drugs. And we're asking young people, as always, to make the right decisions. And us as a nation, we know that for us to be economically viable, or competitive with anywhere else in the world, we need a healthy population. So we don't need a population that we're going to have to be taken care of um, using the, the, the state's resources as a means of, of health and so on. We need a population, a healthy population, especially a youthful healthy population that could take the country into, into, an, into a different level, a different spectrum. The youth ambassador hopes to see much more dialogue on gender identity within the society as this is a way, he says, to scare out a lot of the skeletons that young persons are plagued with. And Senior Environmental Health Officer Ferdinia Carbon has stated that the Environmental Health Department has been trying to solve some of the issues in the Stockfarm area by doing treatment for mosquitoes and also for rodents. 
Carbon noted that treatment at the homes of the various persons who live near the short the storage area was also done as complaints of an increase in rodents were brought to the attention of the Environmental Health Department. An increase in rodents. So we have been doing baiting and doing some education with them. So we're hoping that that will alleviate the problem until such time that final disposal can be done of the of the material that is stored there. Carbon said that the old landfill at Stock Farm was identified as a temporary site for storage of zinc materials. According to her, majority of the galvanized from the city and surrounding environment environs will move to the old landfill in Stock Farm to alleviate the congestion and issues in Roseau. The senior environmental health officer said that weekly treatment at Stock Farm site is one that the health department seeks to undertake. Miss blowing, so we will use all of the equipment we have um, to do the treat the areas for mosquitoes um, because I so because the, of the way it is stored, we can have mosquito breeding. So we'll be treating for mosquitoes and we will continue to do rodent and baiting as the need arise for that. Earlier this week, residents of Stock Farm protested against what they claim is an unhealthy dumping of waste material in the area. However, Carbon notes that work is being done to dispose of these waste materials in a proper manner. And one of the world's best, Brazilian World Cup winner Ronaldinho has retired from football. His brother and agent Roberto Assis confirmed the retirement on Tuesday. Ronaldinho was part of the triumphant Brazil 2002 World Cup squad, won the Champions League in 2006 with Barcelona and won the Ballon d'Or in 2005. Ronaldinho started his career at Grêmio in Brazil before moving to Paris Saint-Germain in 2001. After five years at Barcelona and two La Liga titles, he also had a spell at AC Milan where he won the Serie A title in 2010 and 2011. He moved to the Brazilian side Flamengo in 2011 before spells at Atletico Mineiro, Quetaro, and in Mexico and Fluminense. Well, that takes us to the end of today's primetime news package. On behalf of the entire CBN4 staff, I'm Alan Christopher saying thank you for watching and do join us again next time.